This video is brought to you by CM Storm, preferred choice of mice, headsets, and mechanical keyboards of Curse Gaming. Visit www.coolermaster-usa.com slash team underscore curse for more details. Now this review of the GTX 780 at 2560 by 1440 really um, was an emotional time for me because I used to run these benchmarks on my 30 inch Samsung monitor, which my cat destroyed several months ago. So we've obtained a new monitor, which is 2560 by 1440 instead of 2560 by 1600. And we are back to the races, benchmarking graphics cards and telling you at high resolutions, greater than 1080p, what is the best card for your dollar? Or in the case of something like a GTX Titan, thousand dollars. Now I'm gonna get through this methodology stuff as quickly as I can. We use a 3960X overclocked to four gigahertz, cooled by an H100. We use a P9X79 Deluxe motherboard. We use an Antec High Current Pro 1000 watt, a 128 gig SSD. And we use a variety of graphics cards, obviously for our testing. We're running on Windows 7 and we're running the latest beta drivers for both AMD and Nvidia. We run all graphics cards overclocked because overclocking is free I guess if your time's not worth anything. But it really doesn't take that long because all you have to do is check out the overclocking settings we're using in the graph or spreadsheet that's below in the video description and that'll give you some idea where to start so it really shouldn't take you very long at all. We're testing our games using fraps and because we're not doing any dual GPU or triple GPU setups, it should still be a fairly accurate representation of the performance of the cards. However, it should be noted that particularly if you're running SLI or Crossfire configurations, it's important to use a frame capture setup to get the most realistic possible results. Now all of our games are not only being run at high resolutions but also at very high detail settings because well the justification for it is if you're going to spend $300 on a graphics card you better be running at high details. In this one we see what's going to become a recurring theme and that is that memory bandwidth and memory amount seem to be holding back the 660 Ti and the GTX 680. This is something we did not observe in our 1080p benchmarks. So there is a very clear division where Titan and 780 are up here, 7970 and 7950 are here, and 680 and 660 Ti are trailing at the bottom. In Tomb Raider 2013, it really is men against boys with the Titan and the GTX 780 coming out on top. However, of course, they are priced much higher than the cards that they are now replacing from Nvidia's own lineup and the 7950 and 7970. Metro Last Light is a game that uh, actually kind of creamed all of these cards. Even the GTX Titan only ran at just over 20 FPS average. However, I mean, okay, so we learned that you need multiple GK110 GPUs in order to run this game smoothly at 2560 by 1440. We also learned that sometimes it's not feasible on current generation hardware to turn games up to the very maximum. But with all that said, we still do see a clear difference in performance between that top tier GPUs, the mid tier, where those AMD cards are benefiting from their extra memory bandwidth and extra memory, and then the older being phased out 600 series of GeForce graphics cards. I'm gonna do Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon together because even though the performance in these two games is quite different with Far Cry 3 being much more demanding due to the different graphical style, the way that the cards are segmented against each other in terms of performance is very similar. And this is one of the ones where, and I mean, Nvidia is quoting around a 35% improvement on average, going from a 680 to a 780. In this one, we see that figure just destroyed. At 2560 by 1440, a GTX 780 is gonna give you almost double the performance of the 680 card that it's replacing and almost double the performance of something from the competing red team, such as a 7970. It does cost significantly more than a 7970, but there you have it. If you are a Far Cry 3 aficionado, guys, the 780 is worth a look-see if you wanna play at high resolutions. Let's wrap it up with the classic, but can it run Crisis 3? And the answer is yes, the GTX 780 destroys its predecessor in Crisis 3, and we can attribute this in all likelihood to the fact that it has 50% more CUDA cores, 50% wider memory bus, and 50% more RAM, giving it just 50% more muscle overall. It is a true replacement for the 680 in this case. And yeah, again, if you're a Crisis 3 lover, 
then the 780 is definitely worth a look. It is a significantly more powerful GPU with its Titan DNA and really much closer to Titan performance than anything else. And of course, it's much lower price point compared to the GTX Titan. Now the conclusion isn't really as cut and dried as this is the best performing GTX numbered series card, so it's pretty much the one to buy. However, it's pretty clear that if you were shopping for a Titan, the 780 is definitely worth having a look at. It has most of the performance of a Titan, particularly after you overclock it, and comes in at a much lower price point. It's an obvious successor for the GTX 680, which looks distinctly last generation in terms of its performance compared to the 780, but things get a little bit muddier when you consider that something like a 7970 from the red team does offer up a lot of the performance that you'll need to run games at medium to high settings, even at high resolutions. It has three gigs of memory, and because of the Never Settle bundle, it comes with a bunch of really cool games, whereas Nvidia cards right now are limited to just coming with Metro Last Light. But then of course there's the intangibles to weigh in, such as the fact that you can actually upgrade these GPUs to multi-GPU configurations in SLI and get a tangible, noticeable performance improvement. There's the fact that they run quieter. Um, there's the fact that GeForce Experience is going to make things a little bit more turnkey, so you don't have to go in and tweak things and tune them and remember to download your latest drivers, which honestly, for most of the people watching this video right now, it's probably not a factor. But if you're recommending a card to someone who's an avid gamer but not a hardware enthusiast, might be something to consider. So there you have it, guys. Thank you for checking out the Linus Tech Tips 2560 by 1440 performance review of the GeForce GTX 780. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.